In this video, we'll cover the communication between SD-WAN and SD-AXIS components. We will learn the difference between the communication channels for management, control, and data plane components for SD-WAN and SD-AXIS. With that, we'll also get to know the ports and protocols involved. And lastly, we'll understand what happens in certain failure scenarios. It's important to understand this level of detail when implementing the solution in any network to help avoid communication being blocked by security components that may be in the path. We'll start with SD-WAN components targeted for on-premise sites and cloud locations. The VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator forms the management plane. Edges form the data plane and SD-WAN gateways form the control plane and optionally can participate in the data plane. Newly deployed or provisioned edges will attempt a TLS 1.3 session over TCP towards the orchestrator in the outbound direction from their deployment location for management plane communication. And in the VMware hosted model, this encrypted communication attempt will be across the public internet. The same communication occurs from the gateways towards the orchestrator. Once this management plane session is established, over this channel components will send heartbeats or keep alives every 30 seconds. In the event orchestrator fails to receive 4 heartbeats in a row, that is when the edge or gateway is taken offline. In the heartbeat communication, this is where orchestrator first authenticates the device by validating the certificate presented by the sender. And in its response, the orchestrator will push down any new configuration or policy changes that were recently saved by the administrator. If the certificate is invalid, orchestrator will deactivate the device and not allow it to communicate on the SD-WAN fabric. If successfully authenticated, edges will establish tunnels to their primary and secondary gateways using the patented DMPO tunnel protocol. This will be the same over all available WAN link circuits, public and private. All traffic is IPsec encrypted, and on top of that, the packet is encapsulated in a UDP 2426 header. For communication between the data plane components, for instance, between edges and gateways, that is also sent via the DMPO tunnel using UDP 2426, which again is also IPsec encrypted. Let's now look at what happens in a failure scenario of the management and control plane in the VMware cloud hosted model. As an example, the deployed edges have two WAN link circuits, an MPLS and internet, and in this scenario only the internet link will fail, where management and control communication to the orchestrator and gateways over public internet will be lost. In this failure scenario, the data plane between edges will continue to operate even though the control and management plane are unavailable. Sites will still be able to communicate with one another. What that means is that edges will continue to process user data traffic using the already installed configuration and policies and continue to provide DMPO optimization with peers that it already knows making use of all available transports that are still available. During this time of absence of the management plane, any new configuration changes will not be realized by the edges. And during the absence of the control plane, edges will not learn about any new peers and not learn any new routes that appeared in the SD-WAN fabric where they may still have active communication to the control and management plane. Once connectivity is restored and heartbeats are successfully seen again, all edges will receive any updates that occurred while that communication was offline. Next, we'll take a look at the communication channels for SD access components that enable secure remote access for distributed users and IoT devices. For SD access, internet access is a requirement for the solution to operate. The VMware hosted orchestrator and optimization relays exist solely on the internet. The clients and connectors communicate with orchestrator and relays for authentication, peer discovery, and network and security policy updates. For those components, management communication is formed over TLS 1.3 
most organizations already have outbound TCP 443 permitted through their security devices. This will allow the data plane communication to work for all peers, albeit only through TCP 443 relay. Data is transferred over TLS or DTLS 1.2 on the overlay network. To enable multipathing and to increase resiliency of the data path, more ports will need to be permitted. The relays are implemented as turn servers, which operate on port TCP80, UDP80, TCP443, UDP443, and TCP3478. To achieve the most optimal direct peer-to-peer -peer communication, UDP ports 10,000 to 60,000 are required also. All these connections are outbound, requiring firewalls to allow only outbound traffic on these desired ports. When a client wishes to open a tunnel to a second client or a connector, and it is authorized to do so via the policy, it generates a new 2048-bit RSA certificate for each of its sub-connections, which are peer-to-peer, -peer, UDP relay, and TCP relay. The certificate's fingerprint for each of the three certificates is relayed to the peer. Both peers then attempt to create three secure connections using DTLS, and each side validates the fingerprint of the other as part of a DTLS handshake. The key takeaways for this video are the solution provides complete separation between management, control, and data plane. Management plane uses TLS 1.3 over TCP 443. For the DMPO tunnels, data plane uses UDP 2426. The data plane communication for SD access is slightly different, connecting through relays or direct peer to peer, which varies slightly. SD WANs deployed at site locations will continue to operate in the event of communication loss with the management and control plane and SD access clients in particular are dependent on internet connectivity for relays to assist with multipathing. Thank you for watching this video. 